In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning and we come before you. We come because we know your Father indeed. A Father of mercy and love and goodness and grace. Mighty and powerful. And with you all things are possible. Your children, your people come to you this morning expecting that you are going to blow and roll away every mountain from every life. That you are going to remove sickness and affliction and suffering from everyone. That you are going to manifest your creative redemptive power to bring marvelous things down into the life of everyone. Your people come to the believing that every problem in their families are going to solve. And Lord, we pray that there will be the opening of the heavens for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, our invitees, our members, our workers, our leaders, our ministers, and pastors and overseers, oh Lord, I pray, open heavens for everyone in Jesus' name. Surprise your people, even with what they are not asking you. Lord, stay with your people. Bless your people. Turn everything that is wrong around. That your people may be full of joy in your presence. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hear you clapping like you are in the local government. This is headquarters church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. God bless you real good. You can sit down. This morning we come to consider the word of God and we're talking about the power of God. And as you think about the power of God, how powerful is God? How mighty is God? How great is God? With what measurement can you measure the power? The might, the greatness of God. What can God do in your life in a moment of time? During this period, we are gathered together in the presence of this mighty Creator. What can He accomplish in your life? The power of God. In Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He was asking Jeremiah. Jeremiah was looking at the condition of his own personal life. He was looking at the condition of the national life. He was looking at what he had heard coming from all the other nations. And then he was wondering about this, this, and that. And then the Lord confronted him with a question, like he's confronting you today with a question. You look at your life, your personal life, and the things that bother you, things that concern you. And you think about the spiritual aspect. You want to rise higher, you will rise higher. And you look at your family, yourself, your husband, your wife, your children. And you look at the condition of this, this, and that. And the Lord then confronts you with a question. Why are you so worried? Why are you so anxious? And why is your heart beating? Are you not a child of God? Behold, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. Is there any sin too hard for me? You look at the work you're doing. And you look at the prospects and the problems. And you, you seem to think only the people of the world can make it in this world. But this earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is your father's territory. And then you seem to wonder if things are like this. I go this way. There appears to be a closed 
door. I go this other way. And there appears to be an insurmountable problem. And then the Lord comes to confront Shina with a question. Why you are thinking of the various barriers and stumbling blocks and hurdles in your life? And he says, Behold, I am God. I am the God of all flesh. Is there any sin in your personal life? Is there any sin in your family? Is there any sin in your work and profession? Is there any sin in your surrounding? Is there any sin that is too hard for me? You look at the ministry that the Lord has committed into your hand. The supports were ministers. When I say ministers, I mean all those who are involved in the uplifting, the expansion, the enlargement, the establishment of this great ministry of preaching the gospel with whatever title you may have. And you look at the challenges you face in ministry. And before you kind of almost roll over and give up, the Lord says, Behold, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh, is there any challenge in the ministry that you meet? Is there anything too hard for me? You look at a long-standing problem, a long-standing heartache, a long-standing problem that almost brings confusion. And then, before you give up and just say, I'll manage that, I'll tolerate that, I'll stay with that, I will endure that, I'll take that as my cross. Before you do that, the Lord says, consider not your power, consider not your strength, consider not your might, consider my power. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. And stretch out arm. And there is nothing too hard for me. I don't think that Jeremiah was a scientist. But as an ordinary man, he looked around. And he looked very far. And then he walked some distance. And he looked very far again. And it looks as if the world does not have an end. He looks at the sky. And as he looks at the sky, this great umbrella, and it looks as if the umbrella, the sky, does not have any measure, any limit. He looks at night in the stars, and he started counting, and he lost count. And he looks at the sun during the day, shining bright, giving sunshine to the whole world. And he said, Ah, Lord God, when I consider the heavens, the works of your hands, and I consider how expansive the sky is, the universe is, the galaxies are. And he says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth. Then he comes near, and he looks at every flower at the beauty of every flower and he looks at the symmetry of every blade of grass and he looks at everything minutely and he sees all those symmetrical things and God has taken so much interest that for small things he makes them perfect and for great things, big things, he makes them perfect. He said, what am I worried about? Ah, Lord God, 
that was made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm. He picks up a butterfly and he looks at it from the development of the cocoon until it comes out so beautiful and fine and looks at all the colors and he looks at the matching that God has made and he looks at all the birds that fly and the rabbits and the, and the great animals that walk on the land and then he said, oh Lord, when I consider this the creation is almost infinite. The speeches are almost infinite. And then I look at my own life. What am I worried about? Ah, oh, Lord God, Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by Thy great power. You didn't have any assistance from man. You didn't have any support from man. You didn't have a counsel. That will follow up and follow through on the action plan. All, the Almighty God did everything by Himself. And He said, That's enough for me. He said, There may not be a council that will be able to have some action plan on the areas of my life. But this Almighty God is done everything all by His own self, all by His power. And he said, now I can rest, and today you will rest. Now I can relax, today you will relax. And he said, ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm. Definitely, absolutely, without any shadow of doubt, there is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing in heaven. There is nothing on earth. There is nothing in his life. There is nothing in his nation. There is nothing in the nations of the world. If God decides to do it, there is nothing too hard for thee. It's for that we understand the power of the Lord, the power of God. As we look at the message, I divide to three parts. Number one, the wonder of God's unlimited power. The wonder of God's unlimited power. Number two, the weapon of God's unfailing power. The weapon of God's unfailing power. Number three, worship at God's unshielded presence. Worship at God's unshielded presence. Number one, the wonder of God's unlimited power. As you look at the power of God, and you try to measure that power, try to estimate that power, while you're almost finishing your estimation, then you remember there's something you left out. And while you bring that one in, then there's something else you didn't remember. And then you give up, you say, you cannot measure this. You cannot evaluate this. You cannot tell. On what scale you are going to measure this? Because the power is literally unlimited. The wonder of God's unlimited power. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. Here are the words of Jesus. If anybody knew how great the power of the Heavenly Father is, Jesus knew. And Jesus has left this on record for us. Matthew chapter 19 verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are, everybody, possible. 
when you pick up a problem, when you think about a problem, when a problem confronts you, when it brings fear, worry, anxiety into your heart, when it scatters your brain and it appears there is no solution and you go to men that are reputable for solving those kinds of problems and you say, we have never met a problem like this. And Jesus now says, whenever you meet anything that with men is impossible, then you bring it to God. Because with God, all things are what? Possible. The morning as you come before the Lord, and you try to think, what in my life have I counted impossible? What am I trying to give up? And I'm saying, there's no point wasting my life on that. That's literally impossible. On this child, one of your children, it is no point being fussy about this, about this matter. And the mother comes to the father and he says, you know, daddy, look at this child. All the force, all the argument, all the correction, all the counsel, all the effort, all the finance, everything we put on this matter. The problem is not solved. Why don't you give it up? When you come to a situation that you have found impossible, that the family has found impossible, that your people around you have found impossible, and then you've sent that child to another place, Let me help me take care of this. And yet, they return the child and they say, 